There's another exhibit space over here in that gray house, Arnold house. Okay. Check that out after the tour. Now the home in front of us was purchased by Abraham and Mary Lincoln in 1844, and they bought it for about fifteen hundred dollars. Oh wow! Think about how home prices have changed over the years, right? Or not fun to think about, depending on your situation. When the Lincolns purchased this home, it actually did not look like this two-story structure. It looked more like one of these one-story homes that we see out here in the neighborhood. As the Lincoln family grew, as Mr. Lincoln's legal career grew, the Lincolns expanded. They renovated that home on the lot. They built first back and then upwards to the 3,100 square feet that we see today. So we're viewing this home as it looked in 1861 when the Lincolns left the Washington, D.C. Around here. Okay. Wow. Okay, like Mike said, this is the parlor. Um, this is where the formal entertainment would have been done. And Mary was in her element when she was entertaining. Wow. She was pretty, she was smart, she was young, she was from a wealthy family in Kentucky, and she loved to entertain. I think Mr. Lincoln might have seen it more as an opportunity to let people know that he was still very interested in politics. Um, some of the original items in this house or in this room are the marble table to the left is original. Wow. Almost all of the dark horsehair furniture is original. These folding doors are original and the candlestick holders on the mantelpiece are original as well. And Eddie Lincoln, right? They buy it in the 1840s. And so it's interesting to think about the size of the table reflecting the size of the family at that moment in time. That's one of those factors to think about, right? The size of the family changes while the Lincolns are living here. There's been a little damage done to the edge of the table, but I'll flip this back real quickly just so you can get a sense for that original woodwork. I think it's very evocative to imagine those everyday moments yeah. in this space, right? The Lincoln yeah. It's a 3D photo view. Right? So you put those cards that are on the table into the box and you can see... Have the little ones when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, similar to a Viewmaster. Yeah, Viewmaster. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes, that's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool to think about the Lincolns doting on their boys a little bit, right? Oh, that shows you they can gosh. afford to buy some of these nicer luxuries uh, for the boys by the 1850s. Wow. Okay, we are now standing in wow. Mr. Lincoln's bedroom. The bedroom behind me is Mrs. Lincoln's bedroom. It was not unusual back then for the husband and wife to have separate bedrooms. It was a status symbol. If you could afford it, you did it. And it also allowed for more privacy. As often, the husband and wife would sponge bathe in the, in the bedroom and they would use the bathroom in the bedroom. So it allowed for more privacy. Um, the, most, the most frequent thing people notice is the wallpaper. What do you think of the wallpaper? It's different. Most people kind of like it, but say it's a little bit on the busy side. Um, Mary suffered from migraine headaches, and I don't think this wallpaper helped <laughs> the migraine headaches very much. Um, some of the items that are original to this house are the wardrobe. You'll notice in Mary and Abraham's bedroom, there are no closets, so the wardrobe would serve as the closet. That uh, chest of drawers right there is original. And most importantly, the desk here in the corner is original. We believe this is one of the first items Abraham bought when he came to Springfield. <laughs> kind of small for a man who was six foot four, <laughs> but we think he kept it for sentimental reasons. He probably didn't pay very much for it, but it was probably one of the first pieces of furniture mm -hmm. he ever bought. And you have to remember, this is a man who came to Springfield with virtually nothing. He, he came in on a horse with no money and no place to stay. And Joshua Speed was nice enough to give him a place to stay and share a bed. Mm -hmm. We also believe that on that desk is where he may have written some of his most famous speeches, mm -hmm. including, we're not sure, but the House Divided speech. Now the wallpaper, the interesting thing about the wallpaper is it is the only original pattern that we have in the house. Oh, wow. Now we know this because when the house was undergoing renovations, they found a, 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 a replica of the time. I mean, it was common for the time. Oh. More airflow through. Yeah, these are called transom windows. They allow air transom windows. Transom? Mm -hmm. And they allow air 
fires circulate through the hot oh. wall. Keep things a little bit warmer in the winter. Okay. You could, you the could shut the door and have your prophecy. Yeah. To, okay, to that's cool. Yeah. Aw, the baby's little. <laughs> Okay, this is the children's room to your to my right, and the hired staff's room to the left. Oh. Now, one thing you may notice about this area is it's very plain, and the reason for that is visitors would rarely come back here. Maybe occasionally, but very rarely. So the Lincolns thought there's no real reason to pay a lot of money to make this all fancy, and probably the boys were have been destroying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Normal. Um, small kitchen. One thing you may notice is obviously no electricity ran through this house, so no microwave oven, no refrigerator, <laughs> no dishwasher. Again, things are a little tougher back then. Um, the only original item in this room is the cast iron black stove that sits in front of you. Uh, it weighs over 600 pounds wow. and was shipped from Buffalo, New York. Now, the reason it's outside of Abraham Lincoln's house. That's the outhouse. I'm sure with this haunted units they're glad they don't have to do all the outside tour part. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Abraham Lincoln's house from the front. 